Alright guys, so we finally got the uh, fuel system finished after a lot of procrastination and uh, having a lot of other things to do. Um, we finally got it done. So uh, let's go over it a little bit here. Um, I don't know if in the last video you guys saw, but uh, we start off here. Uh, this is the front of the fuel rail and uh, that's a dash eight with a dash uh, eight adapter to the fuel to stock fuel rail and uh, runs over here to my fuel pressure regulator. And from there, <clears throat> out the bottom, the uh, return line is a dash six. Okay, got our aeromotive uh, fuel pressure uh, gauge. And, uh, oh, here's, here's a good tip. When you hook up your, uh, your uh, vacuum line from the uh, fuel pressure regulator to the uh, intake, you wanna try to use these hard lines uh, I, I see a lot of people using um, on like boost controllers and all that. They'll use this like flimsy um, silicone line or uh, something that is that can flex with boost. You, you really want something like a hard line. You get much better response. So I also have a hard line going from the intake to the uh, ECU master's uh, map sensor. So I get really good readings. I don't, it doesn't fluctuate. It's very stable. So that's a, that's a tip. You know, you get these hard lines. It's, uh, uh, I don't know where I got this one. I think that came with my, uh, my boost controller kit that I got off eBay. It came with like a, a roll of line. So I'm not sure where you can get that, but anyway, that's just a tip to, uh, you know, how, how you want your uh, vacuum lines to be run. Uh, so from there, this runs all the way back to the back, uh, to the tank, and and then from the, the back of the fuel rail, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a, a 90 degree fitting here that goes under the car. Basically, comes through here, all the way, zip tied to the uh, subframe connector. Here's the, uh, the fuel filter. And then from there, it just goes right to the back uh, where I have the fuel pump mounted right here. Okay, so, and then I also ran a, a drain. Okay, this is just a basically, just a, just a drain, because I have two Two separate uh, outlets here on the fuel uh, on the fuel cell, so I'm using one of them so that I can drain it. So yeah, so like I said before uh, in a previous video, uh, when you're running E85, it's a good idea, especially if it's a race car. If it's a street car, it doesn't matter because uh, you're driving it every day. But if you're racing it and it sits for a few weeks in between times of the track. Um, you want to drain that fuel, drain that E85 out of there, put some regular uh, like 93 octane in there and run it for a few minutes just to get your, you know, get your injectors lubricated, you know, because the it, 93 octane has lubrication in it and E85 does not. It's very corrosive. So uh, to avoid problems, you know, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. So anyway, uh, the last thing I need to do so yeah, here's the return line. The return line feeds in back here. Um, it did feed through here. I just didn't like the way it was uh, kind of stretching the line because I kind of made a hole here with a grommet and it was stretching the line funny. So I moved it to over here and then just capped this off. So, and then this is a rollover vent I had to add. Uh, I, believe, I believe those are required. You know, if you go to the track and they look at your um, fuel system, you want to have a rollover vent. So I still need to, this has like a check ball in it um, on the inside of here so that if the, if the car rolls over, the, it's, it's vented, but when the car rolls over, the check ball will move up and prevent fuel from just pouring out. So got that done and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. The last thing I need to, uh, the last thing I need to do is uh, just wire it up which I'm gonna to go to the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to use the, uh, the stock wires, you know, that went to the stock pump and uh, see how that works. Make sure that um, 
I, I think it'll be okay. I don't know if this pump draws more current. It might, but uh, we'll see. If it, if it, you know, if it feels hot to the touch, then I'll know that I need a heavier gauge wire. But uh, that's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna splice into this and kind of like tie it up over here and then uh, go to the uh, fuel pump. So, and then um, what I'm gonna do, and what you should always do when you, when you do a, a new fuel system, what I'll do is I'll disconnect this return here, okay? And I'm gonna put it in some kind of a little container right here. And I'm gonna purge like about a half a gallon of gas, just regular gas. And uh, just to get any debris, you know, from building the lines, because you never know if you got something in the line. And um, this way it'll just purge it right through and right to the back, it'll purge out all the lines. And as long as you're not running the engine, the injectors aren't going to be sucking any fuel, so it'll just go right past them and, um, you know, clean out your, all your lines. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to wire it up, get some gas, and uh, also check for leaks and all that too. So I'll be right back. All right, so we got it wired up. Uh, I just basically came off of the stock harness here, uh, went around the back of the, uh, the wheel well there, and attached it to the pump. So I'm gonna try to have to, I'm gonna have to try to somehow attach that back here so it doesn't flop down, but that's just a minor thing there. I got it zip tied here. And um, yeah, so let's uh, so let me try it and uh, see if see if we got any leaks. Yeah, everything looks really good. So let me cut that off. Uh, everything looks pretty good. I, I'll i go through and double check everything really closely, each fitting, uh, but so far there's nothing like pouring out, which is a good sign. Um, the initial fuel pressure was reading around 50 PSI. So let me, I'm gonna have to adjust that, but you want to adjust that when the engines are running. So, um, I have all the spark plugs out and uh, I, I bought a new set of spark plugs so let me get the spark plugs in uh, and gap them and get the plugs the coils back on and uh, we'll start it up set the base fuel pressure I'm gonna set it to around 40 45 uh, I, that's pretty much standard and pretty much what I want to do is uh, just make sure that the fuel pressure that I'm getting on the uh, mechanical gauge matches what the ECU master is, is reading as well. Um, it may, it may not, I don't know. So we'll see. Uh, but let me go ahead and get that done. Get the plugs in, get the coils on, and we'll, we'll get this thing fired up and set the uh, fuel pressure. All right guys, so one of the biggest questions I get like all the time uh, is where should I uh, gap the spark plugs? So um, I got, a, like I said, I have a fresh set of plugs here that I'm, that I'm gonna be using, and um, I figured I'd just go over it really quick. Uh, I gap them around 23, 24 thousandths. Uh, you, you can go like up to 30, 32, but once you get into the um, over 20 pounds of boost, 22 pounds of boost, um, you gotta get, get, get that gap way down, 22, 23. Uh, if, you're getting, if you get misfires, like if, if you gap it that far down and it, start, and it misfires, then go up a little bit, but uh, it's really hard to under gap. I mean, you can, you can definitely over gap it, uh, you know, as long as it's firing. And the, the, you know, the thing is you don't want the spark to blow out. So, and then also don't use one of these, you know, cheap AutoZone uh, spark plug gappers that you, you know, ride the spark plug around the outside of it and, and try to guess where it's at. Get you an actual feeler gauge, okay? that gives you different increments um, of, of gap. So this is gonna be much better than, than, than using one of these. So that's just a tip, uh, you know, each engine's different. Uh, if you're running stock boost, 
it's like a you know a stock 1J. You could definitely do in like the 26, 28 range. And uh, these are BKR 7Es, which uh, a BKR 7E is like I think it's one um, it's uh, one number colder than like a stock plug would be. So uh, yeah, so let me do that, and then uh, we'll fire it up. pressure set right at 45 so um, we're gonna leave it there um, it matches up pretty good with the uh, the data logger so uh, yeah let me turn it off and uh, we'll finish this video so yeah it, it matches up with the uh, the data logger good so uh, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video uh, Everything went well. I mean, everything went smoothly. It took me forever, but that was partly because of uh, parts. I, I didn't get the, um, some of the fittings didn't come in until like last week. So, but anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and drain it because that was 93 octane in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain it. I only put like a gallon and a half in there and uh, go ahead and get some E85, start it back up and we're gonna have to adjust the tune a little bit before we actually get it to, you know, say a dyno or to the track or whatever. Um, Typically, you, you got to like if you switch from 93 to uh, E85, you want to give it about 30% more fuel. So what I'll do is I'll just make up another graph. Uh, you know, I'll keep the 93 octane tune, and um, on the ECU master log, we can. Um, it has options where you can go and uh, do a different uh, graph for, you know, your a different a different um, fuel. So these are the fuel tables here. So you have, you know, you have your VE table. This is, this is the one right now I'm using, which is the uh, 93 octane. And then we can go ahead and I can basically copy that onto uh, uh, the other, the, you know, the, the other VE table, VE table number two. And then I can go ahead and just um, do 30% more fuel on the whole entire thing you know, to get it running uh, on the E85. So, very simple. Um, I know there's other ways. I know uh, Trevor at Motion Auto, what he does is, he'll trick the ECU, and I, I don't know if he still does this or not, but he was, um, like, he'll just tell the computer that the injectors are 30% smaller, so that it, it will basically do the same thing. You know, it gives you 30% more fuel. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with a different table so I can keep my uh, 93 octane tune and because it'll it'll tune differently you know what I mean it's gonna tune different so it's not gonna you're not your curve is not gonna be exactly the same as uh, pump gas so but anyway so uh, yeah anyway like I said that's gonna do it guys uh, like share subscribe uh, check me on Instagram I'll put my little link here at the hated 1j so uh, I'll check you all later see ya